answers through October. And on Facebook the other day, we asked parents what their greatest concern was when they were deciding to homeschool. And we got some really interesting responses, but we've grouped them so that we can actually deal with them in the broad sort of sweep. And the one that keeps on coming up is about um, fear of Department of Education involvement, having to be forced to use um, the curriculum prescribed by the DBE, as well as um, whether parents should register or not. So um, let's open with that. We have done discussions, and in fact, I can pop those links below in the comments section. We have done more in-depth discussions, but for a mom who is about to start, what would be your sort of paragraph to them about, should I register? Must I use the government curriculum? What about their interference in my homeschool? Okay, that's a lot to summarize quickly, yeah. but basically, the law says that you must register and yet many homeschoolers choose not to and you as a parent need to go and research and decide whether the requirements for registration which are not laws they are just requirements are in the best interest of your children and then make an informed decision and you can get legal advice about that on various websites and you can contact us to get referred to legal advice. Um, you don't have to do the national curriculum. By law, we are not um, forced to do it. We have the freedom to choose whatever curriculum or, or resources that aren't even a curriculum we choose that will help our children to learn. And um, the interference, it does vary from province to province. In some provinces, the officials are very keen to come and visit in your home which is actually a violation of your family's right to privacy. And as a parent, you're obligated to protect your children's privacy. So unless they have good reason and you agree with those reasons, there's no reason why they shouldn't contact you and you could send them the information they need via some other means or get legal advice about that situation before you just open your doors and let them in. Because although they might be friendly and nice to you, we might be setting a precedent which could lead to abuse of other families, yeah. especially if the officials coming in aren't as friendly and are more antagonistic and threatening to your children or scary or just not as, not as open to home education as the current ones might be. Mm -hmm. So that's a legal question that we really have to, to guard against. Yeah, yeah. That's great advice. I get short advice, but I think that the point is, is that we've been homeschooling for so many years in this country. Since 1994, it's been legal. There are so many people that have gone ahead of you. So if you are feeling nervous, if that is a thing that's stopping you from homeschooling, rather go and seek the counsel, get the strong men on your side, sign up with the Pestalozzi, join Liberty and Learning, and surround yourself by people who are going to support you in your decision um, so that it doesn't stop you from just enjoying the freedom that you have in homeschooling. So yeah, that was the one topic. The other one was um, something that we all start out with when we're young families. Our kids are, are young. We've possibly given up one career so that we can be at home with them and finances come in. So again, we have discussed budget um, and often we talk about how the eclectic homeschooling model is so cost effective for um, parents because you can use it with one curriculum with a variety of ages instead of going with something like CAPS or a school at home where you've got to do grade by grade and it gets expensive. And in fact, on that point, I did a poll yesterday um, on one of the more popular homeschooling groups and I said, give me what your budget is per child per year. And the majority of people are homeschooling their children for 10,000 rand each per year. That's you know, there were some that were way below that part, but that was the average. There were some outliers. Some parents were spending like 36,000 Rand um, per child. Um, and I can't think that back, even with inflation, even with exchange rates, even with shipping from the States um, now, that I would ever have spent that amount of money. So, um, if a parent says, oh, I don't think that I can do this because of finances, what would be your, your advice to them? Yeah. The great thing is that 
uh, you can choose to spend as much as you want to when you're home educating. You're not forced to pay school fees or to enroll in any particular curriculum provider and use their services unless you want to. Mm -hmm. So it's very freeing. And the thing is, you can buy your resources month by month as your budget allows. You don't have to buy everything in January or February when the school year starts. Yeah. So it really gives you control and freedom. And you can buy as little as you need or as much as you want and use the library and other resources. So it really is possible to home educate on any budget. Correct, correct. And, and again, um, we must just say that there are programs that are out there that um, will sell you all the bells and whistles. And it's important not to, to be blinded by that. Um, a, a good... A good homeschooling environment and successful homeschooling doesn't come from spending lots of money. What it comes from is the engaging and the relationship that you have with your children, understanding what their goals are for their life. So money does not equal successful homeschooling is I think the, the, the take home from that one. Um, then the other, the other question was, um, the one mom said that she was so worried that she wasn't going to be able to adequately prepare her children for um, tertiary education. So she had always thought that homeschooling was going to be a primary school thing, and then they would go and get a proper education at, um, at high school. And now all of a sudden her thinking is opened and she's saying, mm, high school's not that scary. But if somebody was going to say, say to you, um, oh, I can only do this for the primary school years, high school is, is, is terrifying, and I'm not going to prepare my child. Um, what would your response be? Well, you and I have both done it, so we know that it's possible. <laughs> yeah. I think it's perhaps more scary for parents who are starting homeschooling when their children are at that high school level because they haven't had the primary grades to discover how you become a co-learner with your child yeah. and how there are resources there that make it easy for you to help your children to learn anything from algebra to who knows what, you know, astronomy and Shakespeare and all kinds of amazing things. So I think it's just, we're just reiterating what we always say, you can do high school as a homeschooling parent. There are resources that are designed with the, the knowledge that a parent is not an expert in physics or algebra or trigonometry or any of those subjects that many of us think of as tough. Mm -hmm. And your children are able to self-study using these resources that are designed specifically for home education, or you can even do online learning at the high school level if you need to. But there definitely are solutions that make it possible. And you just have to supervise your children, um, especially those who are not so responsible. You know, some are very academic and diligent and others take shortcuts. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely possible and you can give them a world class education, get international school leaving exit mm -hmm. um, certificates mm -hmm. if you want, or, or do the local South African senior certificate, but it's definitely doable. Mm -hmm. And then the last, the last one, which um, I think if you've had a really great time yourself as a, a scholar um, and you've got memories of team sports and school concerts and um, matric farewells and all those sorts of things um, you would hold those um, events quite strongly in your heart and would want your child to experience the same thing um, and the one mom said that was one of her her sadnesses when she started homeschooling is she thought that 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 was not going to be part of her children's um, homeschooling journey um, and subsequently realize that that's not true, that there are many, um, many different things that um, homeschoolers do that kind of compensate for those things. But I will start with saying that it's important when we look at our school career, whether it was good or bad, doesn't mean that it would be like that for our children. So if I had an amazing time at school and my child goes to school because I want them to have that same amazing experience, um, it doesn't necessarily equal that. They may have a rotten experience and likewise with a person that has a really bad school career. However, having said that, um, there are homeschoolers sports days, there's I Steadfords, 
Um, there's the Shakespeare group of schools. We had um, homeschoolers put on their own Shakespeare plays for five, six years. And I think, in fact, it might still be going. Um, and matric farewells and are springing up all over the place. Started off with being very small, just a few kids, and then has grown. Um, were there any other things that you did with your children that kind of compensate for the, the loss in... Um, <laughs> the team sports and that sort of thing um i must say none of mine were too phased about not being part of those kind of group activities but we did have a lovely and um, local su support group for many years um i'm still i've moved and still trying to get connected where we are now but um you know we had friends who are homeschooling and so we just did things as families. We had end of year prize giving little mm -hmm. ceremonies. We had a homeschoolers have talent concert one or two years, I can't remember. We've had entrepreneur days. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we haven't done all the things that some schools would offer children, but to compensate, we've had many other advantages because mm -hmm. we're homeschoolers that we've been able to have other kinds of experiences. So there are pros and cons in whatever choice you make and you just have to accept that and if there isn't something that you want your children to have try and make it happen you be the organizer set Great. it up you know and and that's why there are so many more opportunities nowadays than there were when we first started homeschooling mm -hmm. so it's definitely not a reason to not homeschool yeah. you've just got to make those kind of things happen if you can absolutely so well that's that, that, that's that's a good way to end the the chat so lovely chatting